Yes, it is finally here, the all new Polestar 3. Now, the Polestar 3 is directly related to the Volvo EX90, which brings me down to a very big question. Is it better than the Volvo EX90? Well, you know what my answer is? I'm inclined to say yes, but before I say yes, I have to back it up with proof as to why it's better than the EX90. And let me present the proof to you all right now. Judging by the way it's designed, the height and the length, it is a bit small compared to the Volvo EX90, but this is great news because when we're talking about the consumption of electricity, it is far more efficient. Now, if we study the rear design of the Polestar 3, it looks almost as if they abandoned the Volvo traditions for most parts, except those rear lights that are continuous, but this time the rear lights uh, are shorter rather than longer being until here. And uh, they've maintained a simple rear door, which looks awesome to be honest like from this angle it almost looks like a wagon and the side view of the Polestar 3 resembles the Volvo XC models like I'm talking about the XC40 the uh, XC60 to some extent now the front has a strong Polestar identities it reminds me of the Polestar 2 but then they also have the tor shape uh, headlights which is exactly what you'd see on Volvos but don't underestimate this Polestar 3 because you can still move houses with it just watch out that the middle seat is Rather heavy. Oh uh oh. Oh! Oh my gosh! This is so heavy. But on a serious note, you can move houses. And you get an interior that strongly resembles the Volvo EX90. Although, if I'm being honest, it is better than the EX90 because of the performance oriented design. And it should also be noted that the primary competitors of the Polestar 3 are the likes of the Tesla Model X and the BMW iX. This Polestar 3 costs 112,000 euros. Is it good value for money or not? Let's get on with the review right now. Now, one thing to note is that when opening the bonnet, it was a bit confusing for me at first because you have the spoiler at the front, so I wasn't sure if there was something underneath this that had to be pulled. But the thing you have to pull is from this side. So there's this yellow object right here. You have to pull from this, there, up, then it goes up. Now, right underneath this bonnet, you get additional storage space, just like you'd get on a Volvo EX90. And you get your emergency kit, and you even get a mat which is removable for ease of maintenance. And if you don't need to remove it, you can always leave it in there. Emergency triangle. And look at the way it falls down. There's a magnet right at the end. And the metallic exposure right here. This electric motor produces 380 kilowatts and it has an autonomy of around 560 kilometers. This body paintwork is called Snow. 22 inch four multi spokes with the orange calipers again. Animal welfare Napa leather seats and with this orange seat belt, making it look all sporty. Reminds me of something Mercedes AMG would usually have. And you do get a Bauer and Wilkins sound system. 360 degree parking cameras with parking sensors at the front and at the rear and multiple safety systems like the LiDAR. That's right, I'm going to try saying LiDAR with a Swedish accent. LiDAR, LiDAR. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this. Now, compared to the Polestar 2 and Volvo cars, there's something very different about this Polestar 3. The, the sound of the door, it doesn't have a Volvo-ish sound anymore. It's, it sounds very different. Listen to this. And, and same story with the rear door. Now it is time to check out the interior of the Polestar 3. And as I mentioned earlier, it's very similar to my experience in the Volvo EX90. Uh, electric seeing adjustments that are rather simple, exactly the same concept as the Volvo EX90 and the Volvo EX30. Uh, and then the center right here, very interesting. Now, first I'd like to jump straight to the infotainment system. Now for the infotainment system, they are using an Android system for it. So uh, it's just like the Volvo EX90. If you use the map, it's almost similar to what you'd see on Google Maps. It's, uh, it's good, nicely detailed and everything, but I just get the feeling that uh, BMW has easier usability with a swivel wheel right here. And uh, the Volkswagen group tend to give more details like the relief and everything. Uh, and it's their own work, it's their own indigenous work, whereas this is all Android, but then it doesn't really matter. You don't get a swivel wheel or anything, you get this entire thing right here, just to uh, adjust the volume. Now, if I'm being honest, I find this to be a bit pointless, because why have this whole swivel wheel right here dedicated to volume control when you could have just dedicated this to 
controlling the infotainment system. Cameras, you can see 360 degrees. That's good. And also you get a one pedal drive mode. So it's basically when you release the, your foot from the pedal, the car brakes automatically. Although I would avoid the system. I'll just stick to, you know, having br brakes and pedal, you know, accelerator pedal. For the rest of the interior, it's very interesting. The steering wheel has a very good feel to it, surprisingly. It's it's nice uh, size and uh, the thickness is good. Uh, steering adjustment is in the infotainment system, unfortunately, which I personally find a bit pretentious. I think it would be better if you had a latch, you know, and you could adjust it manually or something. Uh, the gear transmission is right here next to the steering wheel, just like you'd see in a Volvo EX90 and the Volvo EX30. Uh, great. I like how the center area cocoons you right here. It's, I'm impressed. Then you get two cup holders right here under this piano black uh, shutter, which is good. Holds my cup in place. Decent. But then putting the bottle right here, it kind of feels like it gets in the way with all this nice decor, you see? Because looking at the interior from this angle, it looks gorgeous. But then as soon as you put a bottle right there, it feels like it gets in the way of all the nice looking interior. Anyways, wireless stuff from recharge pad right there. And then underneath you get some additional storage space and uh well you get this huge bit of trim right here which looks like it was supposed to be a shutter or something but i don't know it's just to hold your phone in place what i've noticed that as of lately when it comes to practicality solutions volvo and polestar have some really interesting solutions that i perceive illogic but then they do have a plan of their own and now to open the glove box it's the similar system like the volvo ex90 i'm assuming so i'm not entirely sure how it's supposed to be done but i'm assuming here there is a there's a button anyways this is a door bin it cannot fit a big water bottle but it, well i mean it can but it, the water bottle will be lying down really so it can hold my small bottle up straight and uh yeah now over to the back seats of the Polestar 3. All right, so ease of entrance, vast entry, it is great. Uh, but there's a problem. There's no handle up here on any sides, the front or the rear. Okay, uh, and I noticed the similar problem in the Volvo EX90. And the floor space is good. Uh, it, it's great. You get a flat floor right here, quite literally. That's interesting. But uh, underneath the driver's seat, there's literally no foot space, depending on the seating adjustment of the driver and the front passenger. Knee room, unquestionable. Headroom, unquestionable. But then again, the headrest is rather firm. Okay. Uh, you get this nice armrest right here. And two cup holders right there. That is so cute. That's good. And the armrest is rather wide. So it, it's, uh, it's almost like a table. And thanks to the flat floor, the middle passenger will have a lot of comfort. And you get a nice detailed climate control right here with two air vents right down there and two charging ports that seem to be there like an afterthought. Backseat pockets are rather firm. It's hard plastic. Yeah, it's, I can only imagine what you could use it for. The door bin seems average. It seems good. <clears throat> now it is time to check out the boot space of the Polestar 3. So to open the back door, it is very similar to a Volvo car or like the Polestar 2. But what's really special is that this time the door is so silent. It opens very quietly because, because whenever I open the rear door of a Volvo car, like even the Volvo EX90, it would make this loud Scandinavian sound, you know, this big boom before it opens. It's great, but this is too quiet. Now make no mistakes, the volume in the boot space is huge. It's massive. Now, of course, because of this crossback style design, there's not much volume above, but down here, a lot of volume and underneath this flat floor, additional storage space. You can even put your recharge cables down there. It's good. Tether points that are quite nice. Nice Polestar basketball. <laughs> well, it's just an accessory. A uh, 12 volt socket right there. It's a shutter right here. Pleasant. Well, let me see. Oh, there we go. The boot lip is also great because the floor is flat over here. The metal plating is at a nice position and the body paint is not very much exposed. So therefore loading luggages in and out should be no issue. So here's my conclusion of the Polestar 3. For a price of 112,000 euros and when compared to the Volvo EX90, this Polestar 3 makes far more sense. To me, 
It was love at first sight. I saw pictures of it on the internet and I knew instantly I liked this car far more than anything Volvo's built. Now that's not to say that the Volvo EX90 was not good enough because the Volvo EX90 has its own advantages. It's a seven seater, whereas this is not entirely a seven seater and it was not entirely meant to be a family friendly car, but it is family friendly if you need it to be family friendly because it has a lot of space. And especially when we're comparing it with competitors like the Tesla Model X and the BMW iX, this car has far more practicality solutions. Checking out the Polestar models, it has changed my view of the Polestar brand. There was a time I used to look down on the Polestar brand because they were too recent and being Volvo related, I had this thought that they were not as reliable or not as interesting as the German competitors. But now I'm beginning to change my mind. This Polestar 3 is more convincing than anything the Germans have come up with so far. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos that are on the run. I will see you all next time.